Good day ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm of course your host, The Calfless, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Path of Champions here, Legends from Terra, where once again, we are going to be doing a top 5 video here on the channel. So today's top 5 video is going to be 5 of my recommended champions for you to use to beat Aurelian Sol here in POC. Now before we get into the actual list, let's talk a little bit about the Aurelian Sol campaign and what essentially you need to know if you're new to the channel as well as new to POC. If you already know this part or you're just simply a more experienced player, feel free to skip to the timestamp them given on the screen right now. So what is the Aurelian Soul Adventure? The Aurelian Soul Adventure, for those of you who are new, is a 4-star world adventure in the map here in POC. This is currently the hardest adventure, ranking in at the highest difficulty of 4 stars, comprising of 3 boss battles and also multiple champion encounters along the way. Being the highest difficulty adventure, or the hardest adventure in the game at the moment, this is only unlocked after you fully complete the 3.5 Galio in Demacia. To fully beat this adventure, you need to complete it 5 times, winning with 5 different champions from 5 different regions. Now unfortunately, I do not have a screenshot of that, but the 5 regions should be listed on your screen right now. Number 1, a champion from any region. Number 2, a champion from Bilgewater. Number 3, a champion from Demacia. Number 4, a champion from Targon. And number 5, a champion from the Runeterra region. Now that you know what the Aurelian Sol is about, Let's talk about my 5 recommended champions. So these champions are just my personal favorites to use, and I have used them all here into the Aurelian Soul campaign, which is why I'm confident enough to recommend them to you. Besides each champion, I will also be giving you one alternative that you can potentially consider if you're trying this adventure. Once again, I won't be going too in-depth in this one, I will only be touching on the functionality and the relics, and I'm also going to assume that said champion in your account is already at star 2 or higher, or level 20 or higher. Let's talk about the free region champion first. Now it's no surprise that I'm gonna recommend Jinx for this one, because Jinx is quite simply a really strong champion as we've established in yesterday's video. Her star powers, as you may already know, are exceptional, what's the worst that could happen too, will allow you to deal 1 damage to the enemy nexus and 1 to the random enemy. Upon level up, she will also create a super mega death rocket in hand through the wreak havoc power. In terms of the relics here, as I mentioned yesterday, the recommended build to go for is probably Gale Force, Loose Cannon's Payload, and Curator's Gatebreaker. Once again, the idea here is that you're gonna want to summon Jinx, discard your hand, and deal damage with what's the worst that could happen too. Consequently, Gatebreaker will trigger, essentially striking the Nexus for 4 damage. At the end of the round, Jinx will recall because of Gale Force, and you can rinse and repeat the process until you nuke the Nexus. The alternative to Jinx that I would personally recommend here is going with a Teemo, quite simply because he also offers a lot of good passive damage. Teemo's star powers are arm and ready too, when allies attack, plant 10 poison puff caps on random cards in the enemy deck, and strike swiftly, plus 1 stalling mana when your opponent draws a card with one or more poison puff caps on it, create a fleeting poison dart in hand, it is burst speed. As you may also already know, Teemo is all about planting mushrooms in the enemy deck, so if you're gonna go with a Teemo into this one, you're gonna want to essentially plant as many mushrooms as you can into the Aurelion Soul, essentially relying on those mushrooms to trigger, ending the game as well as winning it for you with minimal effort. My personal favorite and preferred Teemo build is to go with Gale Force and Double Gate Breakers. Now before we get on with the video, I understand some of you might have trouble getting these relics. Don't worry, I will be making a video soon, covering every single champion and my suggested alternative builds for them. These will be done episodically, and every episode will cover one specific region. Anyway, let's come back to our discussion. The idea with this build is that upon summoning the Teemo, we will have Gatebreaker strike twice, effectively planting 10 poison puff caps for you. Assuming this is on an attacking turn, you're gonna be able to follow that up by attacking with the Teemo. Now if you remember Teemo's star powers here, which will allow you to plant 10 poison puff caps on random cards in the enemy deck, upon attacking you should be able to level up the Teemo because there should be 20 mushrooms in the enemy deck. As a result, Teemo levels up and his consequent Nexus strike will start to double the amount of mushrooms. Now bear in mind that we are running a Gale Force, which means we have an extra attack after attacking once. Basically, if we do the mathematics, we are going to be able to plant 80 puff caps on the first turn. This number will only continue to grow, and the higher it gets, the higher your odds of winning, effectively making Teemo a really easy champion to play. Moving on to the Bilgewater region, I personally recommend Misfortune. Now Misfortune was one of the first champions that I used to beat Aurelian Sol. As a matter of fact, she was the first champion that I played here on the channel into the Aurelian Sol several months ago. The reason why I recommend Misfortune Fortune is because of her star powers. Nothing but Powder Monkeys 2 will effectively summon a Powder Monkey every round, and as we all know, Powder Monkeys will die upon the round end, 
hence dealing 1 damage to the enemy nexus. Most wanted with when allies attack, draw a unit is a little bit of a niche spell, you're gonna want to pick up something like the higher education power in order to take advantage of this. In terms of relics here, I recommend you the same build that I used to beat Aurelian Sol here on the channel. In that particular video, I went with the Ludens Tempest, a Krongar Inheritance as well as a Tempest Blade. Now the idea with this one is really simple. Misfortune needs to be on the board to level up. With that in mind, you're guaranteed to take advantage of Inheritance as well as Tempest Blade. Tempest Blade will proc, essentially stunning the entire board, Inheritance will then kick in, allowing you to attack with the rally. Ludens Tempest is also here just to amplify Misfortune's damage output. Honorable mention for the Bilgewater region is gonna be Alawi. Now before we talk about her, this was a really tough decision between Alawi and Pike, both of which are my favorite champions to use here in PUC. However, I decided to go for Alawi quite simply because she was a little bit more durable and at the same time isn't as feast or famine as Pike. Now since Alawi is all about tentacles, it's only appropriate that her powers here essentially facilitates that. Prophet of an Elder God 2 will allow it to spawn 3 whenever allies attack, and test the spirit with plus 1 starting mana will grant the weakest enemy vulnerable. Spawning is obviously going to be really important here because you're going to want to build stats on the tentacle, henceforth transferring that to Alawi whenever she attacks. In terms of the relics here, my recommended build would be Crown Guard Inheritance, Queen Lead Shade Leaf, and Ginsu's Rage Blade. Inheritance and Shade Leaf is a really good combo here on Alawi because, like Miss Fortune, she needs to be on the board to level up which means they're guaranteed to trigger the rally. Shade Leaf is also wonderful because they're able to grant the supported ally the elusive. More often than not, you're gonna want to give that elusive to the tentacles, allowing you to deal massive damage to the nexus. The rage plate that I have equipped here is simply because I do not have a rare relic. However, it is not too shabby because by attacking and raising stats, you're also progressing Alawi's level up. A safer recommendation, however, is to go with the Banshee's Veil, giving Alawi spell shield. Because you're wanting to build stats of tentacles and effectively transferring those to Alawi, it's gonna be important to protect your Alawi against obliterates in the early and soul encounter. Moving on to the Marciana, my recommended champion is going to be Vayne. Quite frankly, this one was a struggle. All three Damascene champions in the game, in my opinion, are really, really good, and it was really difficult to pick one that I thought would be most effective. However, between Garen and Vayne, I decided to settle on Vayne, quite simply because she is a little bit cheaper to use and can be a little bit more faster to play. Taking a look at Vayne's star powers here, we have the Night Hunter, plus one starting mana when an ally is equipped, give it scout this round, as well as it must do something. Round start if you have the attack token and view it in two equipments in hand, create a golden spatula. This is obviously the first iteration of the power, so let's take a look at the second iteration instead. The difference between the two is that in addition, you get an extra random keyword. Night Hunter giving you free scout is massive since you're gonna want to attack often in order to trigger Vayne's level up. The Golden Spatula giving you extra keywords is also pretty nice. In terms of the relics here, I beat Aurelian Sol with a Vayne that ran Archangel Staff, Choking's Crown, and Ginzu's Rage Blade. The reason why I selected Archangel Staff is simply because I wanted to play Tumble before leveling up the Vayne. At level 1, the tumble only gets cost reduction instead of a total discount in terms of cost. Having that extra mana will allow me to attack more often, henceforth quickening Vayne's level up. At that point, Archangel Staff becomes obsolete because they're going to be able to create zero cost tumbles every round. Troking's Crown is an excellent choice here on the Vayne, quite simply because with the Overwhelm, you're able to deal a lot of damage to the Nexus. Vayne has the potential to get a lot of beefy stats because she's constantly attacking, which brings me to my next relic. Ginsu's Rage Blade is the reason why we're going with Troking's Crown. Being able to attack often, Rage Blade is a no-brainer pick here, despite being a common relic, because you're gonna be able to raise Vayne's stats to an insanely, absurdly high amount. Combine that with Troking's Crown, you're gonna be able to deal a lot of damage to the enemy Nexus with ease. The honorable mention for Damasia does not go to Garen, but to his sister, Luxana. I do realize I mentioned Garen was my favorite champion, but I wanted to shake things up a little bit. And besides, Lux isn't too bad herself. Lighting the way too will allow you to refill mana every time you play a spell for the first time, equal to its cost. Pushing my limits will create a zero cost golden edges in hand once you've played six plus mana of spells. You're effectively getting a lot of value here, because Golden Aegis gives a barrier on a unit as well as giving you the rally. All these powers are really really easy to proc, especially when you take into consideration the build. The build that I personally recommend on the Lux is a Ludens Tempest, an Arcane Comet, and a Lost Chapter. Now before we go any further, I do realize Camtech Duplicator is introduced, Unfortunately, I do not have the pleasure of testing it out yet, so I can't really speak on it on that regard. However, I do believe that this would be an excellent relic for the Lux, 
Therefore, I'm looking forward to unlock it on the event pass. Anyway, coming back to the build that I recommend as well as I use in the Aurelian Sol, the combination of Ludens Tempest and Lux makes sense because she'll be essentially creating Final Spark in hand, which can of course be amped up by the Ludens Tempest. Arcane Comet is also a really fantastic option because they're creating a fleeting Falling Comet in hand, which is also a 6 cost spell. Doing so will allow you to get a free Golden Aegis almost every turn, allowing you to rally almost every round. Now, since Lux is a 5 cost champion, I went with a lost chapter here for two reasons. Firstly, because it's a common slot and I can't equip a rare relic. Secondly, lost chapter will also allow me to refill mana upon summoning the Lux. I call that a win-win. Up next is the Targon region, and it's no surprise that I'm recommending Diana for this one. As we've discussed yesterday, Diana is just an exceptional champion. Outcast Edge 2 will convert your quick attack into a double attack, and Twilight Offering will effectively allow you to bring on more units for less amount of mana. Once again, in terms of the relics, as I mentioned yesterday, Gale Force, Stroking's Crown, and Guardian's Orb is probably the best way to go. Scout will obviously allow you to attack twice, and because you have double attack on Diana, you're gonna be able to strike the Nexus or the enemy for a total of four times. Troking's Crown is a necessity here, quite simply because if you're in an event where you are blocked, you're able to clear the blocker and then deal the remainder of the second strike onto the Nexus. The function of Guardian's Orb here is to give some cards in your deck epic items which can potentially help you out in the game. But as I mentioned yesterday, your core items on Diana are probably Gale Force and Droging's Crown. My honorable mention pick for Targon has to be Leona. For me, this is Hobson's choice, quite simply because I do not have the Yumi unlocked, which is the only other Targonian champion in the game. However, Leona isn't the most terrible champion, but she is still not as fast or aggressive as a Lunari counterpart. Piety's reward will allow you to create a Morning Light upon leveling up an allied champion. So La Power will grant all allies plus one plus one upon triggering Daybreak, and the second iteration of that power will allow you to get an additional plus one plus one whenever another ally activates Daybreak. Admittedly, I am not an expert at Leona. However, this is a build that I've devised when I took on Aurelian Sol several months ago. Once again, I'm opting for Gale Force here, and the reason for that is simply because I want Leona to recall, resummon again, and trigger her Daybreak, effectively stunning the strongest enemy multiple times. Troking Scrum with the Overwhelm is here to take advantage of the Daybreak effect which will give everyone a plus one plus one. As for the Everfrost, I find Leona to be a little bit slower than most champions and a little bit challenging to play. Having the stun on the fly, in addition to the Daybreak stun, will allow me to stun two enemies per round, effectively nullifying threats on defensive turn, or allowing me to attack on an offensive turn. Finally, let's look at the Runeterra region. Now, my personal recommendation for Runeterra is to go with Jax. Jax is a really solid champion and well-equipped to deal with the Aurelian Sol encounter. Relentless Assault is nice, giving you an extra draw whenever an equipped ally dies, but the ace card here is probably the last light of Kefia. Allies of Attack, grant me plus one plus zero. If I'm equipped, also grant my equipment plus one plus zero. The second iteration of this will just give you additional stat buffs. Either way, this power is really good because you're gonna be able to use that to deal a lot of damage with the Jax. And the best way to do that is to do so with my recommended build. Once again, I'm recommending a Gale Force here because it's able to attack twice courtesy of Scout. I'm going with two striking relics on the Jax here, a Stalker's Blade and a Creator's Gatebreaker. Stalker's Blade will allow us to strike the weakest enemy and Gatebreaker will allow us to strike the enemy next. Both of which will contribute towards Jax's level up because Jax will equip the Light of Akathia first before he actually strikes, henceforth progressing his level up. This also works really well with the Gale Force because they're able to recall the Jax, resummon him on, and effectively strike for even more damage. In other words, they're trying to cheese the Nexus here and effectively take advantage of Jax's insanely cheap cost. Our honorable mention for the Runeterra region and the final champion in this video is gonna be Evelyn. Evelyn is perhaps one of the strongest champions to bring into Aurelian Sol, quite simply because of the way she operates with this build I'm about to suggest. However, let's talk about her star powers first. Peak of Ecstasy 2, when you level up an ally champion, grant allies everywhere plus two, plus two. Love Eternal, plus one starting mana, the first time you kill a follower each round, create a fleeting copy of it in hand. The Love Eternal is nice, but Peak of Ecstasy 2 is probably where you're gonna see it shine the most. And the reason for that is simply because of the build that we're going for here. Crown Guard Inheritance, Tempest Blade, and Droking's Crown. 
Now, some of you who are really familiar with Evelyn will already know this is an insanely busted build, but a little bit of explanation for newer players out there is that you're able to level up Evelyn for a total of five or six times. Therefore, you're essentially able to proc Tempest Blade and Inheritance a total of five times as well. Each time Evelyn levels up, she's gonna get a stat buff, giving her a plus two, plus two, continuously stacking until she maxes out. The idea with this is you're gonna wanna take advantage of that, effectively aggroing the Nexus before she hits that cap, stunning all enemies, rally rallying, proceeding to attack, rinse and repeat. Now these two relics perhaps form the core build on Evelyn here, but in addition to that, I went with a Troking Scrown when I beat the Aesol. Having the Overwhelm on hand is nice, especially when you consider that Evelyn will get a stat buff, assuming you're on a turn where you've stunned the board and the enemy summons a unit, you can potentially bypass the blocker and still deal enough Nexus damage. And there you have it, those are my top 5 champions to use to beat Aurelion Soul here in POC, as well as some honorable mentions that you can potentially try out for yourself if some of those champions are unavailable to you. Now once again, I do understand that some of you may not have some of these relics, but don't worry, I will be making a video soon covering the builds and the alternate builds that I would run on every champion. However, this video is just meant to be a rough guide to give you guys a rough idea of how I would approach these adventures. Therefore, if you found this video helpful or enjoyable, please consider leaving a like as well as subscribing to the channel. I really do appreciate that support, but most importantly, it's so that you don't miss future episodes or uploads of Legends of Runeterra or Path of Champions content just like this one. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching as well as joining me on this video. This is Kefla signing off. Hopefully, I catch you guys in the next one. Goodbye.